Good morning, students. The title of our lesson today is the informal letter. And like you already know, the informal letter is any letter you write to your friends, your classmates, your roommates, your siblings, or any close relative. An informal letter, just as the name implies, informal, is a letter you write just like you converse, the way, exactly the way you converse with your friends. The formalities are not part of it. So we shall go straight on to the format of informal letter in this episode. If you look at the board here, we have the format of informal letter written clearly. Number one, the first thing you do when you're writing an informal letter is to write the address. The address is one of the most important things. And for an informal letter, you have only one address. And that address is the address of the writer, your address as a writer. And that, that address is written at the top right-hand side of your full scar. It's written at the top right-hand side of your full scar. Only one address, mark you. And after the address, the next thing you do is write your salutation. The salutation. That's where you say, dear, the person's uh, first name or nickname. For example, dear Joseph or dear Joe, if his nickname is Joe. After the salutation, the next thing you do is to go straight on to the body of the letter. And the body of the letter is broken down into three main parts. First is the greeting. Because in writing a letter, you must greet. That's where you say all those greetings that you do. How are you today? How are you doing? I trust you're fine. And all those. I trust you're fine. No, that, that's where you do the greetings. So after the greeting, the next thing you do is to go straight on and state the purpose of writing. In writing the purpose, please, I beg you, don't say my main aim, my main reason, my main purpose. You should rather say, you should rather say the reason for this letter is to dot 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 inform you, or I write this letter to let you know, or this letter comes to you at this moment to inform you. Oh, I am doing this letter to give you vital information. Please do not say my main aim. Do not say my main reason because it will attract some zero some uh, punishment. So after the greeting and the purpose, you go on to the conclusion of the body. The conclusion of the body, not the conclusion of the letter, but the conclusion of the body. You know, that's where you say something like, um, that's where you warn. What you do there is to warn that you are about to stop writing. You don't just stop writing abruptly. You must warn the reader that you are about to stop writing. That's where you say something like, uh, I have to stop writing now because uh, my teacher has just walked into the class. Or I'm running out of ink. I have to stop writing now. Or I feel drowsy, so I have to go to sleep now. So, but there must be that warning that you're about to stop writing so that your reader will understand that the letter, the letter will soon end. So after that, you go straight on to the close, the main close, the complementary close. And there, the only thing that is permitted, for example, purpose, the only thing that is permitted is yours sincere. Yes, sincerely. I know there are a lot of things you like. You might want to write myself, yours affectionately, and all those. But on exam purpose, make sure you write yours sincerely. That's the only thing that White understands. Yours sincerely. Yours sincerely. After yours sincerely, you put your comma. Note that here, your Y 
in the euros begins with capital letter and then the S in sincerely is a small letter. After sincerely, you must put a comma. After the comma, then your name or your nickname. And then, full stop. Make sure you observe those punctuation marks because they are very, very important. Okay? Now, I want to, I want to go back to the address to let you know how the address is done. How the, to let you know how the address is done. This is... Um, let's take a look at the address again. The type of address we use is what we call a block form. And in writing the block form, you will note that everything appears on a straight line. The F in federal, the P in PMB, the P in Portacot, the R in Rivers, and the 11. All of them appear on a single line. So, you begin with uh, your address. Here we have Federal Government College. After Federal Government College, which is the institution, you must observe this punctuation mark, comma, here. And after that, the PMB, you also observe another comma. And then after that, the town, the next town, which is not the last town. Here, you note that Portacourt is the next town, not the last town. It will also have the, the comma. And then you will get to the last town. By the, time, by the time you get to the last town, you must end with a full stop. You mark it with a full stop. When you get to the last town, I take it again. The last town here is River State. By the time you get to the last town, you put a full stop. Or what we call period. After that, the date, 11th May. After the month, make sure that you put another comma. And then after the year, full stop. This is very, very important. If you look at the date in here, you will observe that the TH, after the 11, you observe that the TH, after the 11, is on the same line with the 11. It is wrong to say, First, like this, second, third, fourth. These are wrong. So what you do, the correct one is first, second, third, and fourth. So these are the correct ones. Note this, very, very important. All right. And then also take note of the body of the letter. Look at the body of the letter as, as illustrated on the board. We have Dear Shalom. That's a greeting, the salutation. Dear Shalom. Then you go on to the body. The first thing in the body, the first thing in the body here is greeting. And here you're asking, how are you today? That's greeting. Where you express, uh, where you, you you share pleasantly, you find out how she's doing before you go on to write. I trust you're fine. After that, you go on to the purpose. This is the purpose represented here, and I have said the reason for this letter. I did not say my main reason for this letter. I said the reason for this letter is to whatever, whatever. And then after that, in concluding the body, you do some greetings. You greet some others that you have not greeted and then express the fact that you are about to conclude the lesson. After saying, say me well to your siblings. Please, I have to stop writing now because I have some assignments to do. And then you conclude. You do the complimentary close by saying, yours sincerely, comma, a parlebor. That is my name. And that is how it is. And then there is um, this question that arises most of the time. You know, for those of you who be writing WAEC or NECO or external examinations, you are always expected to write up to 450 words. 450 words in your essay. 450 words. So some people have this challenge on how to be able to get 
how to get up to 450 words long. So what I always advise is that you write a story in a story. What do I mean by that? Writing a story by in a story means when you're done with your assignment, with what you have been, the purpose, what you have asked, been asked to do. For instance, if you are asked to advise your sister who is in another school, in, a, in another country, who is finding it hard to cope with her lessons. After asking her or prescribing what she should do to help her cope better, and you have done 250 words essay, what do you do? You tell another story in a story. You can add something that is relevant to that your story. You can say something like, um, I remember when I was in SS1, when I had an issue with, um, I had an issue with uh, mathematics, I could not cope with mathematics and other, and this is what I did. I did that and did that and that. Another, you have, rege you have regenerated another story, and by the time you're done with that other story, you discover that you have written up to 450 words long. If you have done that and you still have up to two, uh, you have 350, 350 and you have uh, your division of um, 100 words, what do you do? You can, you can recount what you have said. I just want to tell you again what I said, what I, what I would advise you to do. The first thing I said is this, the second one is this, the third one is that, and that, and that. When you do all this and you can't find succor, my advice will be that you kneel down and pray to your God because the solution may only come from God thereafter. By the time you, do, you have done that, you will note that you would have reached your 450 words mark. Once again, I want to advise you, you know, so many of you, in concluding informal letter, you write yours faithfully. Some of you write just yours faithfully. So there is no, it is yours sincerely, strictly yours sincerely for informal letters. And then I want to tell you the things that are permitted in informal letters. In writing an informal letter, you are permitted to use slangs, mild slangs, mild slangs. Especially the ones that are peculiar to, that are familiar with the person you are writing to. If you are writing to somebody in your house, you, your, your brother or your sister, you use the popular slangs you use at home. Those ones are permitted. You can talk about, uh, and then you can also use general slangs. You can use general slangs like uh, crush, crush, and things like that. And then if you want to use any slang that is peculiar to only your environment on exam condition that may, your examiner may not know, put the meaning in brackets. Like in your school here, you use um, the word like um, uh, Owi. And uh, if you are writing Owi, that Owi can tap to me for a while before I regain myself. The examiner will be wondering what we is. But what if you, to help, the, to help us explain to the examiner, what you do is you put in bracket. When you say, oh, we was cantab, me, or oh, we cantabbed me until I regain myself. You put in bracket, I was almost famished. Almost famished in bracket. So that there's only, oh, okay, see what you're talking about? And then here, you also talk about something like um, blasting. That now nah, the first time I got to the school, I saw blast, blast everywhere, blast, blast in the environment. And then the person will be wondering what blast is. And then you put you explain in bracket what you mean by blast. So that's what you do. And then contracted words. I also said that you can use contracted words. You know the what I mean by contracted words? You can use something like can't for cannot. You can use shouldn't. For should not. You can use shan't for shall not. You can use wouldn't for will not or would not. 
And then again, you can also use, um, you're also permitted to use um, abbreviations. Abbreviations. You can abbreviate uh, uh, things like, you want to talk about dormitory? It's a dorm. What happened in the dorm? Or uh, you can say what happened in the ref for refectory. Or uh, what happened at the chap for chapel and all that. So those things are also permitted. Now, these are the things that you should not do. Note that signature is not permitted. You are not permitted to use signature in informal letter. If you use signature, you'll be strictly penalized. So signature is not permitted in informal letter writing. No signature. Don't use signature. Use, like I said, use familiar slangs. You can use contracted words. You can use um, abbreviations, but not signature. Signature is not permitted. You use signature when you're writing formal letter. So at this juncture, I'd like to do a comparison between formal and informal letter. I'll just recount them. Number one, informal letter is a friendly letter, while formal letter is an official letter. You must be strict when you are writing a formal letter, because you are writing to somebody you do not know. You are writing to somebody you are not familiar with. But when you are writing an informal letter, you are writing to your contemporaries, you are writing to your friends, you are writing to people you are familiar with. So you are free to use your language. But if you are writing a formal letter, you must be reticent. That is, you must control your words. You must control your language. You must use official language. You must use formal language. In an informal letter, I told you, you're not supposed to sign your signature. But for formal letters, you sign up, you conclude by signing your name. In informal letter, you use yours sincerely. But for official letter or formal letter, you use yours faithfully. In informal letter, you greet. But in formal letters, you don't need to greet. When you're writing to the governor, you're writing to, you're writing, apply, applying for a job, you don't need to say good morning, sir. How are you, sir? You don't also need, in both, you don't need to begin with your name. It is wrong to say, my name is John Okafo. You don't need to do that. You just go straight on and say what you want to do. It's usually at the end that you write your name. And then, slangs are permitted in informal letters. But for formal letters, you dare not use any slang. Because your receiver may think you're taking him for a ride and may feel offended when you do that. My students, dear students, this is where we are going to end the lesson for today. And um, I'm going to give you an assignment. And the assignment is this. You are going to write a letter. Write a letter to your friend, explaining to him how you spent your last holidays. Thank you very much. God bless you. Dear students, till we meet again, make sure you stay safe, maintain social distance, always wash your hands with running water with soap, and then use, uh, use sanitizers when necessary. Please stay safe until we see you again. God bless you.